In today's episode of the Midweek Ramble, we're busting myths and revealing truths about the proper way to care for your hand knits. If that sounds like just your cozy cup of tea, get comfy and let's dive in. Hello, 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 and welcome to the Wool Needles Hands Midweek Ramble. My name is Taylor and I will be your host. Today's video is one I've been excited to make for a while now as I received several questions all in one month in January uh, regarding how to properly care for your knits. And I know I've received questions in the tip line similar to this in the past, but a lot of them came in in January, which I thought was really interesting. And so I wanted to do a video where we talk about myths and truths about caring for your hand knits. I've dug into the internets and people and asked some questions and done some research and I've got for you some myths and truths about caring for your hand knits that you're going to want to know so that you don't unwittingly damage hand knits or knock them out of shape or do anything to them that would otherwise make all that hard work seem wasted. So the way that we're going to do this is the first half of the video, I'm going to share with you some truths about caring for your hand knits. And then for the second half of the video, I'm going to be sharing with you some commonly held myths about caring for your knits. Now I have a feeling that this is going to conjure up some discussion, maybe a little debate, maybe some disagreements or agreements or who knows what down in the comments section. Always, as always, be kind, but definitely share your thoughts and experiences down below because this may not be true for everyone. This is what I've gathered in my research, but there may be folks out there who've had different experiences and those experiences matter. So share them down below and let us know your thoughts. And before we get started, I do want to mention I am wearing my little black tee today. Today, this is a pattern I am currently in the process of drafting and getting tested soon. It will be releasing soon and I will keep you posted, but I just wanted to let you know, just in case it came up, this is the little black tea. Let's get right into it and start with the truths of caring for your knits. Hand washing is often the best method for cleaning your knits. Many knitted items, especially those that are knit with natural wools, benefit more from a gentle hand washing regardless of the washability of the yarn. Belting and shrinking or stretching can happen no matter what the fiber is and how the fiber is treated. Now, of course, superwash treated fibers are going to be much more resistant to this, but it doesn't mean that it's impossible. So the best method ultimately is always going to be to hand wash your knits. Whether those are hand knits or store-bought knits, this is typically the best recommendation. Now, if you're tight on time or we're dealing with baby clothes or socks or things that are getting dirty far more frequently, if the fiber says that it can be machine washed and dried, go forth and use your best discretion. We've all been there. I have boys. I understand how that works. You really have to use your own discretion. But when it comes to those really delicate hand knit items, those really special things that don't get a lot of wear and really aren't getting that dirty over time, hand washing is really the best. But again, you are the expert on your knits and it is important to use your best discretion here. Use mild detergents, especially if you're using natural fibers that contain a lot of natural oils such as lanolin, you want to avoid any harsh detergents that you may use for regular laundry as those can strip away a lot of those beneficial oils that really help to keep those wool items self-cleaning. Wool is a naturally self-cleaning fiber because of the lanolin and when you strip away that lanolin, you lose a lot of that. So you want to make sure that you're using mild detergents. And I would say that this goes for all fibers, even synthetic fibers. It is a yarn spun from small individual fibers that will more readily break down. And by using gentle detergents, you're lengthening the life of those knits, ultimately preventing that breakdown from happening any faster than it needs to. I have some personal favorite wool washes that I like to use for soaking my hand dyed yarns and my hand knit items. And that is eucalyn. It is infused with lanolin oil and if you do choose to purchase one that is fragrance that fragrance comes from natural essential oils which I really appreciate I will link to my favorite wool wash down below another one of my favorites and if you would like to support a small business is by Tuft Woolens her wool wash soaps are absolutely amazing the scents are beautiful and I do believe that she uses all natural essential oils as well you want to dry your hand knits flat. This is definitely true. It's really best to avoid the dryer when possible. Again, use your own discretion. But if we're dealing with something that really requires a particular shape when it dries, you're going to want to dry them flat. You're essentially going to want to re-block the garment or the item 
every time that you wash it with water. If the item becomes submerged or completely wet, then you're going to want to reblock it as it dries, which means shaping it, laying it flat, and all of that. So definitely don't skip this step. Now, if the item is made of synthetic fibers and it says on the label you can wash and dry this item, again, you can use your own discretion. But if you want that original beautiful shape that you got after you first knit the item and blocked it, you're going to need to lay it flat, shape it, completely re-block it. So always lay your knit items flat as they dry. There is a proper way to store your hand knit items. Nothing drives me crazy. Okay, I have to I have to preface this by saying I love photos of sweaters on hangers. I love looking at the sweater on a hanger in the photo. However, the idea of hanging a sweater on a hanger for any length of time beyond the time it takes to snap a photo makes me cringe, gives me the heebie-jeebies like nobody's business. And oftentimes when you see photos of sweaters on hangers, you can tell they're pulling on the shoulders. It's going to distort the overall shape of the upper body of the sweater and it drives me bonkers. Now, I know that folks that are taking pictures of sweaters on hangers are not storing them on those hangers. It is very much an aesthetic thing and I completely get it. But don't let that visual make you think that it's acceptable to hang your sweaters. It is absolutely not never in a million years okay to hang your hand knit sweaters. And I feel fairly comfortable saying that. Now, if you have another experience and you hang your sweaters in the closet, you can go ahead and share that experience down below. Um, but there are certain, you know, store-bought shirts that you hang on a hanger and you get those weird shoulder bumps from hangers. I just, it makes me cringe. The best way to store your hand knits is folded in a drawer that provides room to breathe. You can also use an airtight container if you are concerned about moths, but it's really important that if you are storing items, you're storing them with some room to breathe within that container in a drawer somewhere like that. If you're storing your knitted items out on a shelf, they might get dusty, and if you do have moth problems, it is going to make them more susceptible to moths, but you have to use your discretion here. It's really completely up to you, but it's better to store them away from dusty areas away from open air, like all of the ambient air, but in a place where within their container, they have some room to breathe. They're not smooshed into a drawer. Now, I have a drawer full of sweaters that probably could use a little bit more wiggle room. Do as I say, not as I do here. I'm just letting you know that if that is you, you're, you're probably not alone, but it is best to try to give them some room to breathe. So if you're finding that your sweater drawer of hand knit sweaters is becoming really overcrowded and smooshed, maybe you need to donate some sweaters or find a new storage system for those sweaters, or maybe just slow down on the sweater knitting, just a thought. But you wanna make sure that they have some room to breathe, give them some space. And if you do find that you have a moth issue or your sweaters are more susceptible to little moth friends, put them in an airtight container or a breathable container uh, to keep them from developing moths. I would avoid putting your hand knit sweaters in plastic bags. Um, I know that a lot of folks will put them in those plastic bags that look like uh, linen zipper bags when you purchase like a bedspread or sheets, they come in those zipper bags with uh, you know, the plastic and the zipper. Those are okay if they provide some room for things to move around, but Ziploc bags can trap moisture and you wanna be really careful not to do that so you can prevent mildew in the future. So really you wanna, breathability and airflow is the key here. Pilling is normal. Now the amount of pilling, the degree of pilling can vary depending on the quality of the fiber. However, when you are agitating or rubbing against a knitted fabric that was knit with yarn that is made of fiber, there is always going to be some form of pilling. Again, that degree will vary depending on the fiber. So if you just finished knitting a sweater and you noticed after wearing it only a couple of times that you're seeing pills, take comfort in knowing that that is completely normal, especially if the item that you just finished knitting is made from a fine wool fiber like merino or cashmere. Alpaca is less prone to pilling, but it will still pill. Pill, acrylic will pill, polyester will pill, fiber just 
pills. So what you need to do instead of becoming frustrated when you see it happening is have a solution for when it does happen. And a really great place to learn more about said solution is a video I recently uploaded where I tested various different types of D pillars. It's a very deep dive and it will definitely be helpful if you're not sure which D pillar is right for you. But that is a great tool to have on hand if you find that you have some sweaters that are more susceptible to pilling. Don't get frustrated, just get even and get yourself a D-pillar to handle the situation. But ultimately, yeah, pilling is normal and don't let anybody tell you otherwise. You should always avoid wringing out your nits. Don't strangle your nits. Don't squeeze them between two hands. Don't do anything that would forcibly distort the stitches when the fabric is wet. It's the, that's the worst time, honestly, to distort your stitches. So you really want to avoid wringing out your knits. Gently pressing out the moisture and the water is okay, especially if you have it rolled into a big beach towel or a bath towel and you're gently pressing down to remove the water, but don't wring out your knits. Also too, a really great solution for getting excess water out of your hand knits when you're going to block them is to use a spin dryer. It's what I use when I block my sweaters. I have a video, I will link to it down below, of how I block my sweaters. It's very helpful if you've never done this before. In that video, I do emphasize, however, that if you are going to use a spin dryer to add whatever it is that you're spinning out and then stuff a towel in the spin dryer with the item so that when it spins, it doesn't spin that item out of control and distort the fabric. That towel that you stuff into the spin dryer will kind of hold it in place and help help absorb some of that water as well. But it's also a really great solution for getting excess water out of your hand knits before you go to block them. But whatever you do, don't wring out your hand knits. Colors will bleed. Now, as a hand dyer, I can attest to this. This is something that just is kind of the nature of dyed fiber and dyed fabric. Even when you purchase clothes off the rack and they're really darkly dyed, there can be labels that tell you that some of this color can come off in the first use of this item or it may come off upon first wash, letting you know that color fastness is really relative and can vary and isn't always a hundred percent. If you are knitting an item that is multicolored, if you're doing a color work item, you really want to make sure how color fast those colors are before the initial wash of that garment. And that can really dictate how warm that water is that you soak your garment in the first time you go to block it. One really great way to test this is to get white paper towel, dampen it, lay out your item, and press that paper towel into the fabric where the colors separate. Pull that paper towel away and see if you notice any serious bleeding of color into the paper towel. You may need to press for a little while and you may need to make sure that paper towel is quite wet. Not so wet that it's going to soak your project, but enough that it's really going to absorb some of that color from the fiber should it be there. And then when you check that, you'll be able to see how intense that saturation is. If you notice just a slight tinge of color, maybe a little bit of a tinting, you should be able to soak that garment in tepid water without any issue. However, if you notice a pretty serious tinting of color onto that paper towel, you want to make sure that you soak that garment in cold water and maybe add a little bit of citric acid to the water just to help fix it to the yarn a little bit further. Some would say that that's the job of the dyer to do that and it absolutely is and I can assure you that it most likely was done by the dyer. It absolutely should have been done. However, sometimes it doesn't matter and there's always a little bit of dye that can remain that comes out in that initial wash. It's really important to just keep these things in mind if you're going to be knitting with multiple colors together that are very saturated or if you're knitting an overall light colored sweater with two or three very saturated contrasting colors test for color fastness, and then soak accordingly. Cold water if you're noticing that some of that color is going to bleed out a little bit, and tepid water to maybe even lukewarm water if you find that there isn't going to be a big issue there. Okay, we've settled some truths. Now let's move on to the myths. Some things that you may have heard, but I can tell you in my experience and in my research, 
just aren't always true. Dry cleaning is always the best option for your delicate wool hand knits. While dry cleaning can be suitable for some knitted items, especially those things you purchase off the rack and it specifies on the label dry clean only, it's not always necessary and it can be harsh on delicate fibers. The dry cleaning process does include using chemical solvents that can be harsh on those delicate fibers. So by hand washing gently at home, laying flat to dry using those recommendations from earlier in the video, you're preventing any kind of possible damage and you're being a little nicer to the environment. Wool should never be washed in water. While it's true that wool can be prone to felting and shrinking if washed incorrectly in water, gentle hand washing with lukewarm water and a mild wool wash is generally safe for most hand knit items and in most cases will keep them looking nice and prevent moth infestations later on down the road. Just avoid using hot water or agitating the items too much. Knits can be ironed to help remove those wrinkles. Ironing can be damaging to knitted fabrics because of the intense heat of the iron and you would never want to put that in direct contact with a wool fabric or even a synthetic fabric because you really run the risk of number one damaging the wool fabric and number two melting the synthetic fibers and all of that just sounds like a nightmare to me. Instead of directly ironing your items you can use your iron and lay a towel over your knitted items and without actually making contact between the iron and the knit garment you can use the steam setting to steam set the fabric and take out any of the wrinkles. If you're going to use something like this, or if you really are interested in steaming your items, I would definitely encourage you to invest in a steamer. It's a little less heavy, a little bit more delicate, and actually gets that job done a little bit better. But steaming is really the only way that you can use the iron to smooth out those wrinkles in your hand knits. And remember, never direct contact between the iron and your fabric. Moths are the only pesty threat to your hand knits. Now, moths are typically the most common pest that can be a threat to your hand knits, but they're not the only pest. Carpet beetles can also threaten the integrity of your hand knit fabrics. Proper storage in a clean and dry environment is the key to preventing damage from these pests. Super wash treated yarns can be washed in the machine and dried in the dryer and there is no risk to ruining the garment. Now this one just came up in the comment section of an older video where I shared with you the truths behind the super wash treatment process and somebody had mentioned that they had washed washed their item and laid it out and it stretched horribly and they were super surprised because it was super wash treated and they thought that it meant it could be machine washed. Well, it does indeed mean that you can machine wash this item and gently dry it without it felting or shrinking. And I would add to that without it felting or shrinking the vast majority of the time. However, what isn't really mentioned, and I don't wanna say it's swept under the rug, but it's just not clarified to most when it comes to superwash yarn is that though it's not going to shrink and felt, the chances of superwash treated yarn in a knit garment or item stretching or falling out of shape are rather significant because the lack of resilience the yarn has due to its superwash treatment. I have an entire video where I share with you what goes on in the superwash treating process, what happens to the yarn, and all of that that happens to the yarn ultimately leads to its lack of resilience and its susceptibility to stretching. So yeah, you can wash a garment that was knit with superwash treated yarn in the washing machine, and in a lot of cases, you could put it in the dryer on low and you won't experience any felting or shrinkage. However, if you choose to wash it in the washing machine and then lay it out to dry, you are absolutely running the risk of stretching the garment or having it lose its shape. This doesn't happen all the time. It isn't the rule, but it is something that could happen and you need to be cautious of that and handle the garment accordingly when you are blocking it for the first time or even just washing it to care for it. Super wash means it can be washed and it means it can most likely be dried without felting or shrinking and that's it. It does not mean that it isn't going to stretch or lose its shape, which can be equally as detrimental and disappointing as it is if something were to felt and shrink. Now I'm gonna add a little bit of a bonus here and kind of a plot twist. And I'm gonna add the last and final myth. And that is that it is essential to block every single thing that you knit. And I'm going to be cheeky and tell you this is a myth because I personally don't think that it's absolutely necessary to block your socks. Other than that, it is 
absolutely true. Well, there you have it, folks. Myths and truths about caring for your knits. Definitely don't forget to drop your own down below in the comment section. There's always so much insight down there from folks who know far more than me or who have various different experiences. You definitely need to visit the comment section of each of these videos. This was fun. I actually learned a lot from this. There were some things I didn't consider and some things I had fun learning more about and preparing to share with you. So I hope you were able to take something away from today's video. And if you were, don't forget to give the video a thumbs up. Definitely subscribe and click that bell icon so you can be notified anytime I upload new content here on the channel, which is every Wednesday and every Sunday for the Knitting Podcast. And until we meet again for Sunday's episode of the Knitting Podcast, happy knitting, happy making, happy whatever it is that you're doing. Take care, be well, and I will see you soon. Bye!